Last time, after waiting around for a few minutes, our code was only 4% done. And after making some coffee and waiting around for another 57 minutes, our code finally finished. Now, if our only machine learning goal was to learn four pixel rules to classify binary representations of fingers and images, this would not be such a big deal. But of course, we would really like our machine learning approach to apply well beyond our example here, and hopefully to much more complex problems. Getting stuck on rules that use just four of the 81 dimensions in our data is a real problem. Now, if you've done some programming, you likely know that there are far more efficient ways to program our search than our Python for loops. But before we charge down this path, let's have a closer look at what exactly made our four pixel code so slow. Remember that in our one, two, and three pixel cases, we didn't run into any speed issues. If we go back and time these loops, we see that they took 0 0.02 seconds, three seconds, and 94 seconds respectively to run. And while none of these times are problematic individually, they do point to an alarming trend. Our run times of course increase as the complexity of our rules increase. But what's really troubling is the rate at which our run times increase. Our run time should be roughly proportional to the number of rules we test and the number of examples we test each rule on. As we increase the complexity of our rules by including more pixels, we've kept the number of examples we test each rule on constant but the number of rules we need to test has increased. Now, how does the number of rules we need to test depend on the number of pixels in our rules? If we call the number of pixels in a given rule k, then there will be 81 choose k ways to choose k pixels. And our rule could look for a one or a zero for each of our k pixels. So for a given set of k pixels, there are two to the k possible rules. This makes for a total of 2 to the k times 81 choose k possible rules. We can now see exactly why our 4 pixel rule took so long to find. We had to search through over 26 million rules. And what's even more troubling is what happens as we continue to increase k. Assuming it will take the same amount of time to test each rule, it would take roughly 31 hours to find the best 5 pixel rule, and 33 days to find the best 6 pixel rule. The exponential growth we're seeing here means that no matter how fast our computer or how efficient our code, we will never be able to find the best rules for even modest values of k in a reasonable amount of time. Even if our code ran a thousand times faster, it would still take around two weeks to find the best eight pixel rule. So it's not just that our particular implementation of our learning algorithm is slow. There's something more fundamental about our approach to learning from data that simply falls apart as we increase k. We have found an approach that really does learn from data, but the nature of our algorithm means that we simply can't use it on the medium and larger problems we really care about. It doesn't scale. We, of course, aren't the first to bump into this problem. This failure to scale is known as intractability and prevented many early AI algorithms from scaling beyond toy data contributing to the first AI winter. Interestingly, since then we've learned that many of the problems we care to solve naturally fall into one of two categories. Those that can be solved in an amount of time that increases as some polynomial with the size of the problem, and those that can be solved in an amount of time that increases exponentially with the size of the problem. Today, this distinction is a critical piece of both practical and theoretical computer science and tells us a great deal about the complexity implicit to a given problem. In fact, if you ask a computer scientist how hard a problem is, they may answer by telling you how the time required to solve the problem increases with the size of the problem. This method of measuring the difficulty of a given problem has led computer scientists to categorize problems into complexity classes based on these metrics. Problems that can be solved in polynomial time are said to belong to the computational complexity class, P. And many of the interesting problems that appear to only be solvable in exponential time fall into the complexity class, NP. As the size of our problem increases, the differences between these two classes becomes dramatic, meaning we can generally solve problems in P, while problems in NP quickly become intractable. Even more interestingly, while widely believed to be true, proving that P is actually different than NP remains an open research question. And a proof either way is worth a cool $1 million from the Clay Mathematics Institute. 
Now, our research thus far suggests that our problem, finding the best k-pixel rule given some label training examples, does not belong to the complexity class p. That is, there appears to be no solution to our problem that scales as some polynomial function with the size of our input. And if this is the case, it means that our problem is as hard or harder than a huge class of very tough problems, and that our approach to learning from data will likely never scale. But before we throw in the towel here, we must remember that just because we found one bad solution to our problem, this does not mean that no good solutions exist. Let's be a bit more quantitative about the time complexity of our solution to finding the best k-pixel rule. Earlier, we figured out that we needed to test 2 to the k times 81 choose k rules to find the best rule that used k of our 81 total pixels. Let's be a bit more general here and call the size of our examples n. So in our case, n equals 81. Also, the time required to run our algorithm should depend on the number of examples we test our rules on. Let's call this m. Now, how does the time required to run our algorithm change with respect to k, n, and m? We need to test 2 to the k times n choose k rules, and we're testing each rule on all m examples. So the total number of individual tests required should be 2 to the k times n choose k times m. While exact run times will of course vary between computers and programming languages, as long as the time required to test a single rule on a single example is constant, the increase in runtime for our algorithm should follow this trend. And, as we know, this function becomes absolutely enormous for even moderate values of k, making our solution intractable. Now that we have a better handle on just how bad things are, let's consider if there's a way out of this mess. Could there be a different approach to our problem that doesn't scale so terribly? Is this the best we can do? Remember that the real issue here is how the number of rules we need to check grows with the number of pixels in our rule. Since we're checking every possible rule, the time required for our algorithm to run grows just as quickly as the number of possible rules. As our haystack grows exponentially large, we continue to search for our needle by brute force. We examine every single last piece of hay. But what if we didn't have to? What if we could test a tiny fraction of all possible rules, and by judiciously using the information we gain from each test, quickly find a rule that offers the same performance as the rule we found by our brute force approach? Remarkably, a strategy that accomplishes exactly this was uncovered in the 1970s and 80s by several researchers, working independently in the fields of statistics and machine learning. The algorithms they developed, decision trees, are going to allow us to dramatically speed up our search. The speed up decision trees will allow for, when applied to our problem, are absolutely absurd. In the 4 pixel case, where our brute force approach requires 209 billion individual tests, decision trees will require just 2.6 million, making this decision tree a staggering 82,000 times faster than brute force. And what's even more incredible here is that the time to train a decision tree will grow only linearly in terms of the size of our examples, the number of pixels in our rule, and the number of examples in our training set. This means that as the size of our problem increases, decision trees remain a viable solution and offer even more dramatic speedups over our intractable brute force approach. Using decision trees, we'll be able to find a 10 pixel rule in less than a second where our brute force approach would require over 8,000 years, making decision trees literally trillions of times faster than our brute force approach in the 10 pixel case. Now, how is all of this possible? How did these researchers leverage the information from such a small number of tests? How do you find a needle in a haystack without looking through all the hay? The answer, next time.